Welcome to the Noesis Interactive Courseware on Unity Mobile. Unity Mobile allows you to build to mobile platforms such as the iPhone, iPad, iPod Touch, or an Android device. In this tutorial we're going to take a look at how to set up Unity to build to an Android device, which will involve setting up the Android SDK and configuring our Android device. Finally, we'll take a look at how to distribute our app on the Android market, which is similar to the App Store from Apple. Other tutorials in this series include a tutorial on how to set up Unity to build to an iPhone, iPod Touch, or other iOS device. And finally, a mobile game scripting tutorial which makes use of accelerometer and multi-touch data for the purposes of a skateboarding game. This tutorial assumes you have Unity 3 installed and an add-on license for the Android build target. If you don't currently have the Android add-on license, you can request a trial license from Unity Technologies. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm using a Nexus 1 as my development phone. You can find all Android-based phones under the Google Phone Gallery, which you can get to by searching for Google Phone Gallery from any search engine. The most important thing when selecting an Android device for development is to make sure that it has Android version 2.2 installed and has a 3D accelerated chipset. Before we begin, you'll need to make sure that your Android device has been updated to the latest OS. These OS updates are usually pushed directly to the phone. However, you can also check for these updates by going to the settings menu on your phone, scrolling to the bottom and going to about phone, and selecting system updates. At this point, you should have the Unity manual open in your web browser. If you don't, you can get to that from within Unity by going to help, Unity manual, or going to your applications folder for Unity and selecting documentation. By default, Android-specific documentation is hidden, so you can turn that on by clicking on the Android icon from the main page of the Unity manual. Once you've selected that, you'll notice the Android guide is available. Go ahead and click on this now. The Android guide is similar to the iOS guide in terms of helping you set up and make use of the features of your Android device. Since we're just getting started, we'll want to go to the Android SDK setup page. We're going to walk through the individual steps of setting up our Android SDK. However, I wanted to point this page out in case you need to get back to it for reference. The first thing we'll need to do is go to the Android Developer SDK web page and download the latest SDK. I'm developing with Unity on Mac OS X, so I'm going to download the OS X SDK. If you were developing on Windows, you'd need to select the Windows SDK. Once you've downloaded and unzipped the SDK, you should move it to a permanent location on your hard drive. For this example, I'm going to just move it to my home directory. Moving on to step two, we now need to install the SDK. The first thing you'll need to do for preparing your computer is to make sure you have JDK installed. JDK is the Java Development Kit. On OS X, the JDK is already installed. However, for Windows, you need to download the latest JDK for version 6. Step 2 of the install process was downloading the SDK and unpacking it, which we've already done. Step 3 we're going to skip because we're not using the Eclipse IDE. For step 4, we're going to launch the Android SDK and AVD Manager. It's located under the Tools folder of your SDK install. Launch the Android SDK and AVD Manager. You'll notice that we have no devices currently set up for development, which we'll do later. But first we need to install the latest SDK platform package for Android version 2.2. At this point, you may only see Android repository and third-party add-ons in this available packages window. Simply click the drop-down arrow next to Android repository to reveal all the available packages. So I'll select that now. You should see newer versions of the SDK in this window that were added after this tutorial is recorded. It's usually best to work with the most current version of the SDK and hit install selected. Install. Once the SDK platform package has been installed, it'll show up underneath the installed packages window. 
The next step in setting up our Android device is to get it recognized by the system. However, before we do that, let's first download an example project that we'll be able to use to test the device. I like to use the Touch Phases project from the Unity Blogs website. This project allows you to do a quick test of whether your touch input is coming through from the device properly. You can get to it from blogs.unity3d.com by searching for touch phases. And if you click on the second link there, you'll be able to download the project folder. Once it's downloaded, you can open up the project from within Unity. Once you have the project open, open the main scene and hit play just to make sure that the application is running. Next, we need to set our build target to Android. If it's not currently set to Android, select Android and then click the Switch Platform button. If you've watched the iOS tutorial, at this point we'd want to install Unity Remote on our Android device so that it could communicate with the editor. This would allow us to use our device to send back touch input and accelerometer data to the Unity editor, which would be simulating our application. However, at the time of this recording, Unity Remote is not currently supported on Android and will most likely come in a later version. In that case, let's go ahead and make an Android build and see what happens. I'll hit Build and Run and label this Build.apk. Build and Run doesn't work with Android 2.3 and Unity 3.1, but it's likely that Unity will address this in the next release. If you're not able to build and run, go to the Unity Android forum for the fix. There's a thread titled Gingerbread Regression with Unity 3.1 that explains this error message. Keep this forum bookmarked in case future SDK updates introduce more problems. It compiles our scripts and builds the player. And then it asks us to locate our Android SDK. This is where we moved it to our permanent location, which I put under my home folder. You'll notice we got an error when we built our player. And that's because no Android devices were found. We haven't yet set up our actual Android device for development yet, nor have we set up a virtual device. Let's go ahead and set up a virtual device now. So I open the Android SDK and AVD manager select virtual devices and hit new. I'm just going to label this my AVD. For the target platform let's select Android 2.2. The rest you can leave as default and go ahead and click create AVD. You can see we now have a valid Android device. The next thing we can do is launch the emulator. So we'll go ahead and hit launch. At this point, let's let the OS boot up. Once the Android emulator is running, we can now go back to Unity and make a build. So I'll select Build and Run, and we'll continue to use build.apk as our target file. You'll notice we get an error. It says device hardware is not supported, and that's because we're running from the emulator. We can change this in our device filter under the player settings. Unity automatically takes us to the player settings window, and now we can select from device filter, universal. We'll need to set this back to ARM version 7 when we make a build to our actual device. So I'll click build and run again and hit save. At this point it detects our emulator and installs the player to the emulator. Once installed we can switch over to the emulator to find our application running. In order for this application to show up the emulator should not be asleep or locked when you build and run the application from Unity. We get a warning because we're running this in an emulator and an emulator doesn't have all the hardware capabilities of an actual device. Just click OK. And you'll see our Unity application is running. Obviously we can't do multi-touch, but what we can do is click to see that if we had one finger down, that this is how the application would work. However, you can still test GUI buttons by clicking on them. Now that we've been able to successfully build to an Android device from Unity, let's set up our actual device.
Since I can't show you the actual phone that I'm using for development, I'll show you the process through the emulator. First we'll go to the home menu. From there we're going to hit menu and then select settings. At this point you want to select applications and then at the very bottom development. On your device you most likely don't have USB debugging enabled. Go ahead and enable that now. you can now connect your Android phone to your USB port. On OS X and Windows, this should automatically detect your USB device. You shouldn't have a problem with detecting your device on OS X. However, on Windows, some devices don't show up properly. So in that case, you can find information about that from the Android SDK setup page of the Unity manual. There's a link to USB drivers for Windows, which describes how to set up specific USB drivers on Windows. However, before you do that, go ahead and try your device out with a build to see if it just works. Now that I have my phone connected via USB, I'm going to go ahead and close the emulator. When I switch back to Unity, I need to update the player settings for my Android phone. Currently, it's set to Universal as a device filter. We need to set that back to ARM v7 for our actual Android device. Next, I'll hit Build and Run, hit Save, and Replace. At this point, now that I've closed down the emulator, it finds my actual device and installs the player to that device. If everything works correctly, your application should automatically launch on the device.